Welcome to my channel. My name is Molly, but my friends call me Mole, and I run a small sewing business from home called Frock and Mole. Okay, so today's video is going to be a sort of a little, um, sort of a chat and a review of the Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans. So if nobody's heard of Megan Nielsen, she is an indie pattern designer, um, but I'm sure lots of you will have. But if you haven't, I will link um, her down below and I'll just pop a link to the pattern as well if anyone is interested. So, um, these jeans were made um, with two pairs of upcycled jeans from a charity shop and then I managed to persuade my partner to let me hack a pair of his jeans which were kind of like beyond repair. Or maybe they weren't, I probably should have repaired them for him but I kind of wanted that colour so I kind of, yeah, persuaded him to let me use them. So with these jeans, I... So, let me start by saying I have... Um, IBS or gut issues and I also have a nice big fibroid which means wearing jeans is actually really uncomfortable so I was hoping with these jeans that I could hack them so that they would be a bit more wearable. Um, I tend to wear dungarees, I wear dungarees a lot actually just because they are so comfortable but the thing with having a fibroid is with mine anyway, I always need a wee and it's really irritating. Um, so fiddling and undoing dungarees isn't always the quickest way to go to the toilet if you're desperate. So um, the first thing that I have learned before I even talk about the jeans is that perhaps I should start making more dresses because I think they're probably more practical than dungarees and jeans. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I kind of did like a vlog style filming of me making these, but it was so, so long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna insert a few clips um, just to show you sort of like the fitting process and kind of my intentions with hacking them so that they would be more comfortable for me to wear. So I'm just gonna insert that now for you guys. Okay, so these are the jeans that I have um, unpicked. And um, yeah, sorry if the camera's really shaky, but this is not a vlog style camera that all the YouTubers have. It's just like a massive, I don't know even what you'd call it, a photography camera. It's my boyfriend's anyway. Um, so let's see how long I can manage to hold the camera in one hand. So um, I have a pair of Wrangler jeans, which I got from, oh, I left the tag on. I was obviously, thought I might. So these are from the British Heart Foundation and they cost me £4.79. Um, so they're the darker pair and I think they were a size, oh they're a size 18 apparently. And then over on this side is a pair of men's cotton trader jeans. Um, so what I've done is I've basically kept everything. Um, so I've kept all the button loops so I can use these. I'm not sure which ones. And then the Wrangler pockets and these ones have got a nice little bit of embroidery on the back. And I've kept um, the two zips, so I just need to decide which one's um, a bit stronger. And that's a neighbor's dog. And then I kept the button, the button, no, the zip flies and the facings here. And I didn't realize, but when I see people's jeans that they've upcycled and they have this cool patch, obviously um, the um, jeans are dyed with indigo and then they've stonewashed them to make them lighter. But I didn't realize you could, this is how they created this effect. So you might've seen jeans where um, they've done them and they're like this. So, which I think looks quite cool. Um, so I might try and incorporate that, but I'm not sure which, I think I suppose these might be the, the bum bit because these are bigger than these ones. This is the PDF pattern. It's not very sexy, the print out, because you know, I just went for grayscale. Um, so I'm gonna go for, um, neither of those, I'm gonna go for, um, hopefully you can see here, but I think I'm just gonna go for the bootcut version. Um, yeah, because um, I've already got Jenny overalls which are slightly flared and if I wanted a flared trouser I'd probably just use a Jenny overall pattern that I've already got. And I don't really, yeah, I didn't really fancy skinny. So that is a pattern I'm going for and I'm going to make it in a US size I did it in metric, a US size eight, which is a 71 waist, a 97 hip, which I think might be, might be slightly too big, I'm not sure. Ok, 
Okay guys, so I thought I'd just show you uh, what I'm doing to my pattern pieces, or what I think, at least I think I need to do to my pattern pieces. I'm just gonna grab my um, twirl here. So I've got all of the measurements that I need. So as you can see, like I said, I thought there would be a, um, obviously a bulge in the fabric because um, added some excess there so it's not going to lie flat anymore so we need to distribute that. Now I found two um, options and I'm not really sure which one to go for. The first one was um, to draw a crease line in. The thing is because I haven't drafted this myself I'm not really sure where all the balance um, points are so where the knee is. I'm assuming it's here where this um, where this uh, notch is that's the knee. Anyway so what's so the first one kind of suggested that you draw in the crease line and then you divide the pattern across the knee, um, one inch below the crotch. I think that's right. Or is it meant to be here? I'm not sure, I need to look at it again. I don't know if I'll do that one. And then um, draw a line across here. And then all you're doing is just slashing and spreading it, kind of. So you're slashing down here, opening these up, popping it on a piece of pattern paper, redrawing the crease line. And then I think opening everything so that you get this measurement in here. That's the first option, and then the second option, which kind of made sense, but um, because I haven't altered, because I didn't fit it, adjusting it here, and obviously the bulge is here as well, I'm not sure if it's going to work the second one either, so I'm not really sure. So the second one suggested that you uh, draw in the centre front, and then you, obviously I take the measurement from my trousers, um, how far it comes down on the crotch. Um, but yeah, you've, but I suppose I could possibly get that extra fullness here, add the side, add it on the onto the side seam of the pattern. This bit here, anything above the crotch, I don't know. Anyway, so it's suggested that you uh, draw in the centre front, uh, mark down from the crotch, obviously where it bulges. Um, they suggested eight inches, I think, and mine was twenty centimeters. I don't work in metric, so I mean I work in metric, and it's just shy. It's eight, eight and a half inches. So maybe. Maybe it'll work actually. Hmm. Anyway, so they just suggest that you slash and you spread the crotch. Um, slash and spread the crotch, obviously adding that two centimetres in. And then what you can do is if the fabric was gathering around the crotch, you can lower the crotch here. So I'm going to look back at my pictures and see. And then what they do suggest, which makes sense as well, um, because I did have that excess fabric under my bum, they kind of suggested that if you let this out, um, you're gonna be adding too much fabric to the crotch in the back, so you just wanna uh, bring the, the crotch of the back up by um, an inch or so, or the same amount that you've let it out, which I worked, which is less than an inch for me, which is, um, so they work in inches, uh, centimeters, so. Yeah, it's about an inch, I guess, two and a half centimeters of pressure, maybe two, uh, three eighths of an inch, if that's a thing. Um, so then you would just bring the crotch in slightly on these to accommodate the extra excess fabric that you've added here. So I'm not sure which one to do. I am tempted just to do this one. It seems more simple. Um, and I guess if I screw it up, I can just um, upcycle another pair of jeans because yeah, this is an experiment really for me and then I'm going to be able to hopefully work out um, kind of my fit issues going forwards and maybe just apply this to all of the patterns. That's what I'm hoping. So yeah, I think I'm going to slash and spread the crotch just to give you a bit more room over the thigh. So it's called an athletic thigh adjustment. So if anyone is bulging thigh at the front like me, go and check out an athletic thigh adjustment because that's um, what you need. Um, yeah, so I am going to do that. Cross my fingers and hope it works. And then um, once all of my measurements are traced off onto my patterns or adapted onto this pattern, I'm going to start um, cutting out my denim and patching it just to see how I want it to sit. So I will check in with you guys once I've altered my pattern and get to the fun creative stages. Yay! Okay, so let me show you the finished jeans. I love them so much. Um, so I'm going to insert some pictures here for you guys just so that you can see them um, on and I might just quickly show you the hack as well. So I have made these out of three pairs of jeans like I said. So I've got a, um, a light denim here, a mid colour denim and then like the dark indigo denim um, for the waistband. So what I did with these as well, um, which hopefully you can see in the pictures, is 
I patched them, which I really, really love. So um, on the front here, I've just got the darker denim and the um, mid color denim on the cuff. And guess what guys? I haven't hemmed them it either because I've been rolling up the cuff, so I might just leave them as is. But I kind of wanted to go for a, um, a frayed edge, but I haven't, I haven't done that. And yeah, folding them up seems to be fine. And so with the top stitching, I always find that top stitching thread runs out really quickly. So with these, I have, how many colors do I have? Three, I've got three colors of top stitching, which I actually really like. So I have gone for um, an orange, and a pale blue and then around the pockets I went for sort of like although it's slightly lighter but kind of like the classic honey coloured um, top stitching thread. I also um, popped in brass coloured rivets in the back here and in the front here as well. Um, so I'm going to link my really really quick tutorial um, of how to install rivets and jeans buttons for anyone else who is interested. And I also, um, so I went, I mean, how long? So I bought this from the scrap store. Oh gosh knows. Maybe like four years ago, I brought a whole load of off cut um, remnants of leather because I believe there is a mulberry um, factory somewhere around near me. And I think they get all of their off cuts. So it's not huge bits, but I just use this patch here, which I think is really, really cool. So I probably wouldn't, I don't know if I'd normally buy leather, but um, yeah, I thought it was really snazzy. So I've popped this patch on the back here, um, but there's nothing on it. So I don't know if it's weird that there's no, um, writing on it, but I really like it. So what you probably will notice in the back here as well is that from um, the wearer before, the jeans have just got um, markings, let me just hold these like this, markings here and here, um, almost holes, but I don't mind. I think I'll patch them if they become a problem. Also what I did, which is really, really, um, super time saving and it's a hack that you guys should have a go at if you are upcycling any of your projects is basically this waistband is the waistband I took off of the jeans and so the belt loops and I even um, used the button and the eye so literally I didn't have to really do anything to the um, waistband luckily because of my hack here in the side which I will show you in a minute um, I was able to shorten the waistband from the side seam, so I got to keep, um, yeah, the buttonhole and the button. So super, super time saving, and yeah, really, really happy about that. Um, also in the back here, um, I've got the detail on the pocket from um, the original trousers, which is quite nice, so it means I didn't have to um, think about a cool design on the back of the pockets. And so on the inside, um, let me just open these up for you. I went for, so this is a, so these are the pocket bags here. So this is a remnant fabric from my local scrap store as well. Um, I think it's a batik and you can see like, I'm not very good at tying off my ends of overlocking. I'm a bit lazy, um, but yeah, I was really pleased with the finish. And so the top stitching, I have top stitched around the fly here, but because I use the pale blue, um, you can't really see it very well, so the top stitching does run along here. Um, and yeah, basically, I really, really, really enjoyed making these jeans. Um, I learned quite a lot. I would love to make another pair, but I'm gonna get to that in a minute for you guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly pop them on for you and show you my hack idea and whether it worked or not. For anyone out there who um, finds jeans really uncomfortable and perhaps yeah, really wants to wear jeans but can't. Okay guys, so um, these are the jeans on. Um, sorry you can always see my mic, I need to sort my microphone out. So I'm gonna come a little bit closer for you guys to see my hack. So what I've done is I have inserted um, a, a visible zip. So I'm gonna call it, hold on, I did look it up. Exposed, yeah, sorry. So I have inserted an exposed zip here. So um, I may or may not have linked it in the previous footage, but I was gonna pop one on this side, but I thought because of the coin pocket here and all of the fabric, there would be too much bulk. And also I only had one zip from hacking these jeans up. Um, so I've just done it one side, which may have been, which is probably possibly one of the issues or maybe not. So this is my idea with my hack. So what I've done is I've added a modesty panel so that I can do this basically. 
Oh, and now they're so much more comfortable. Um, so I have just popped a, um, I'll show you in more detail when I get these off. So I've just popped an indigo, um, the indigo coloured piece of denim underneath and I have popped the zip just into the back portion of the trousers and I was pretty pleased with them you know and the finish is quite neat at the top but I will show you and the finish here isn't absolutely perfect but I was really pleased with like my first attempt so this is my hack idea so if anyone is interested um, for I don't know more details about this let me know in the comments below but yeah oh so much more comfortable so yeah basically my fiber is like all around here so I suppose that's why this extra space here is useful for me but yeah I will show you them in slightly more um, I'll show you this in a bit more detail now. Okay guys, so hopefully that was kind of clear, but if I show you close up, this is what they look like. So um, on the inside, um, it probably could be a bit neater. I have basically um, popped the modesty panel here and I think I probably should have pushed that seam allowance. Um, well no, it's actually it's all meant to go into the back. So I think that's pushed in the right direction. Um, but it's pretty neat at the top, so it's got quite a good line at the top here. But yeah, that is my hack idea. Um, so kind of, yeah, those are all the details of my jeans and I'm just gonna, yeah, talk to you about what worked and what didn't work. So um, you may have seen from the footage that I inserted, basically um, just from like assessing my body and looking at sort of me, um, I've worked out that I have a athletic front thigh or a bulging front thigh. And it's definitely not because I'm athletic, it's, I think it's fat really. Um, but it just means that um, a lot of my trousers, or not a lot of them, basically one pair of jeans that I kind of wear but are still a bit uncomfortable, the side seam in them does this because it bulges towards my thigh. So um, I decided in, not my wisdom, basically, in, my, in, the, in the video that I inserted, there were two options for me to um, fit them so it was either to slash and spread the front of the trouser leg just to allow some more room for my thigh or it was to um, open up the crotch on the front pieces only to give myself a bit more room and then um, because I'd added slightly more I had to bring in the back so what have I learnt from that? I've learnt from uh, my instinct to slash and spread them on the thigh I should have gone for that but I didn't because um, Basically, I'd never done it before, so I was a bit nervous about doing it. Um, but they definitely still pull in the thigh on the jeans, and I think maybe making them smaller in the in the crotch maybe means they ride up my butt too much. Um, but that's like what I'd like to try and um, remedy next time. But I don't know whether there'll be a next time. So basically, I love these jeans so so much. Um, but I just don't think I can wear jeans really. They're just too uncomfortable uncomfortable for me to wear um, for a prolonged amount of time. I think maybe I, as like my last attempt, I would like to try the um, closet, case, closet case patterns boyfriend jeans. So I'm not sure what they're called, but I will link them below. But I think those will be my next jeans that I will try. And then maybe if they don't fit, then I will think, all right, I just can't wear jeans and I will stick with dungarees, but yeah, definitely focus more on dresses. Oh, and so, um, yeah, I would say, um, instructions are really clear. Um, the instruction, they don't really have any instructions on there for the rivets and things, but there are lots of videos online. And obviously there's my video that I was talking about that um, you can check out. Um, the pattern um, was really, clear and easy to print off and put together. Um, the instructions were super clear, I guess because there's, there's a reason why they're so popular because they were really nice to make. So I would highly recommend you guys go and make these jeans because they are awesome. Okay, so um, if you found any value in this video, do consider subscribing. Um, and if you hit the notification bell down here, it will just um, alert you to all of my future videos if you are interested. Um, yeah. Guys, let me know if you have hacked any patterns to make them more comfortable for you below, um, or if maybe you've made the Dawn jeans and um, maybe you like them or you didn't find them very comfortable. Let me know. Okay, I will see you all next week. Bye.